Despite Epic pushing Lumen really hard and full dynamic lighting, make lighting is still quite popular everywhere. It allows you to really customize your lighting, make it look exactly how you want, and for less performance cost. Now that does mean it can't move around, it is baked in. In fact, if you look back just a few years ago, a lot of games still use baked lighting. So what does that have to do with PCG? Well, in PCG, to actually bake your PCG, you actually need to know a few things you need to enable and change so you can actually bake it and have good results. So that way, you can go for something like this using Lumen to something like this using actual baked lighting. So let me show you how that's all set up. So over here, I have a simple round plane here with two different setups. On the right here, I have a regular PCG graph just right there in the world. And the left, I have a spline version. Now I'm currently in 5.5. And since 5.5, it seems, baking is not even enabled in the project by default. So if you try to bake static lighting, you just can't. So to enable it in 5.5 and above, go to edit project settings, and you want to search for static lighting. That way you can make sure that allow static lighting is turned on. Because by default, this is turned off, it seems, in 5.5. If you're in lower versions, I believe it's still turned on by default, but just in case, always good to make sure. So now what do we need to do to make sure this builds? Well, let's start with the regular graph here. I'm going to open up our regular graph. And this is an extremely simple graph of just a crane points grid, a transform point to randomize the rotation scale, and spawning the static mesh. Now in the static mesh spawner, if I open the mesh entries here, and I open it all up, you can see I have all sorts of things in here, including mobility. Now, by default, in 5.5, the default here is static, but in previous versions, it's actually movable. So the first thing you want to do is make sure it is on static to make sure it will bake. Because if it's unmovable, it will not bake. Now, as you notice, I'm talking a lot about 5.5, and that's because in 5.5, a lot of these things have changed. So I'm going to be discussing how it was and how it is, so you can make sure you got the correct setup for yourself. And most of these settings are just changed defaults. So the steps you have to do to accomplish this are exactly the same, it's just the default setup is slightly different. But you wanna make sure it is set to static. And assuming it's set to static, that means that this section right here, this simple grid with all of these rocks will bake successfully. Now you still wanna make sure your light map resolutions, your minimum light map resolutions is all set up. And I have my nanite settings enabled as well. And if that's something you're not familiar with or not sure how to set up properly, let me know and I'll make sure to make a video in the future just going over exactly how to do that. So that's great. This one will build. But what about this one? Well, I believe in 5.5 with that same setup, it should build. But definitely in 5.4 and below, it won't. Now, why won't it build even though the setup is pretty much exactly the same? Over here, I'm just getting spline data, doing on interior and the same transform points and the same static responder. This error is just talking about points intersecting Ensure the spline points are not overlapping. If I was to restart my engine, this error would go away, which is why I always tell people to just ignore this error as long as you have made sure that the points aren't actually overlapping. I still to this day do not know why it is there. So in the static mesh spawner, just like the other one, if we open it all up, you can see it is also set as static. So what is the problem here? Well, at the very least, in 5.4 and below, the problem isn't in the PCG graph. The problem is in the blueprint. And maybe you're wondering, how is that possible? What could be the problem in the blueprint. It's just a basic spline in PCG. Well, it's in the spline itself. By default, when you create a spline, its mobility here is set to movable. It is not set to static. And all the points are generated from the spline go off of the spline's mobility and not the one in the PCG graph. So that means you can set up your actual PCG graph all to be static, set your spline to movable, and it will just not bake. So you want to make sure that your spline is also set to static and then you should be able to bake. Now, obviously, if you still want to be affected by dynamic lighting and things like that, there's always stationary, but we're just going over just the basic baking principle. So make sure your mobility here is set to static. The other thing you need to do actually is, again, modify the default project settings if you want to bake. So I have added a post-process volume here. It is set to unbounded, and I've just gone ahead and disabled the auto exposure. But the main thing I need to do is actually disable Lumen because Lumen prevents you from baking at all. You cannot have static lighting if Lumen is enabled. So how do we accomplish that? In the post-process volume, I can search for global illumination and you'll see the method here is set to none. 
By default, it will be on Lumen. You want to overwrite it and set it to none. Then there's screen space beta, and you can use a plugin if you have one, but we're gonna set it to be none, which will allow us to bake. Now you can absolutely do that on the project level by going to edit project settings, and then searching for global illumination here. And you can see dynamic global illumination method by default here is Lumen, which is default with engine. The reason I don't want to change it here and rather do it in the post process volume is because then I can play around still with Lumen without needing to throw in post process volumes. And I can just set up an entire level to still bake with just a simple unbounded post process volume. That's just a personal preference. But if you're always only ever going to be baking, no Lumen at any level at all, you can go ahead and set it in the project settings. And of course, for baking, my directional light and my skylight are both set to static over here. At this point, you are pretty much ready to bake. I'm going to be using GPU light mass. Now, this is not on by default either. So under edit plugins, you want to search for GPU light mass to enable it. And then I can go to build GPU light mass, turn off real time viewport, and I can just bake it honestly with the default settings. It is high enough quality for this test. And here we go. Our bake is done. Now you might notice this side is a bit darker than this side, but that's just because these are two separate setups. And I think I have this slightly different in the randomization. But if I zoom in here right on the seam between the two and I just turn the directional lights on and off, you could see nothing is changing. If I turn off both of the directional light and the skylight entirely, you could see we have full lighting on these things. They are fully baked and the entire world around it is pitch black. So in case you're concerned that this side isn't baked because it's slightly lighter color, this is just a matter of randomization and control over that. And here's our information post baking, as you can see. Frame, of course, does not go below 8.33 unless you change it in the settings. Game is fluctuating around four, draws around 0.23 and 2.4, RHI is around 1.4-ish, this around GPUs are 3.6, and input is fluctuating, depends on if I'm kind of moving my mouse and things like that. So overall, as you saw earlier, the improvement is pretty good. But that's usually the case. You get better performance when you have baked lighting. Of course, you sacrifice dynamic lighting, but main thing is you now have options. Now, as far as really big, like partitioned levels, I have never done baking for partitioned levels, so I can't speak on that, unfortunately. But if that is something you're interested in, let me know and I'll gladly look into it. If you want to test these settings and the setup for yourself, the project files will be available on my Patreon, where you can join these wonderful people here in supporting what I do. It really means a lot. And if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord will be down below as always. And if you're interested in learning more about PCG, check out this video right over here.